I'm a representative of the theme and it is my honour. I hope you guys have a lovely evening this evening uh, and that it goes nice and smoothly and the kōrero is sustainable and has sustenance. Um, o tira, uh, I'm going to hand this over now to Peter. Kia ora. Um, yes, let's, yeah, let's just give a big round of applause for this evening. Kia ora. Kia ora, Peter. Kapai and Kiora, Tangana Fenua, Taranaki, Fanui, Connor McLeod for the Mihi Fakatu. Um, Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa. Welcome and thank you. It's great to see such a good turnout this evening. Uh, we're here for a pre election debate, probably the first one uh, in the lead up to this year's election, so uh, it's good timing. The theme of tonight is uh, Navigating Global Uncertainty, Trade, Aid, and Foreign Affairs. And tonight's event is brought to you by the Council for International Development and the New Zealand Institute of International Affairs. Globalisation is under threat, famine is on the rise, civil society is increasingly fragmented, and climate change is having a more severe negative impact. According to the latest World Food Programme report, over a quarter of a billion people are facing acute hunger, while economic shocks in the Ukraine war are contributing to further increases. You would have seen as recently as July 17th, Russia announced that it would not renew the Black Sea Grain Initiative, and this will further compound food security issues, particularly in Africa, where a lot of our members are operating. We're also seeing increased global security threats and power projection in the Taiwan Strait and South China Sea. Our panellists tonight will share what they see as New Zealand's role on the global stage, their perspectives around international cooperation, aid, development and trade, and the event will also explore our position in the Asia-Pacific, how we can strengthen ties with Pacific Island nations and cultivate, cultivate deeper partnerships. Uh, called Josie Pagani <coughs> to Boingawa, and uh, it's very good to be here. We were here uh, three years ago. I don't want to alarm you, but uh, this was the 2020 election. We had the same debate, and it ended up being the only live debate in that election because we went straight into another lockdown. So. Oh, Don't want to worry you, but uh, <laughs> it may not be over. Jerry, let me go to you first. Are we on the brink of war, and do we know what side we're on? Uh, I, I, notwithstanding that uh, very interesting sort of list that you've just uh, read out, uh, I don't think we are on the brink of war. I think um, uh, there are tensions between countries uh, that at the moment I think are not as well defined as we might uh, imagine them to be. Uh, and I think the key to it all is that the, uh, the interlink between the economies of so many countries around the world uh, and that of China. And there's a sort of a fixation on China, uh, which uh, is, is justified uh, for, for any number of reasons. Uh, but 143 countries around the world count China as their major trading partner. For some time, they are grappling with the climate crisis. Their crises are different than the ones that the US and Britain and Australia want to solve, which is this trade war with China or the military um, uh, competition with China. If we want to lift the Pacific, the mana, the sovereignty of the Pacific, we need to focus on the problems that the Pacific is facing. So we have those forums. We can, we can push our allies and trading partners to alleviate costly debt for the Pacific, to emancipate the Pacific's economies, um, to lift the voices of the Pacific when they talk about their need for climate mitigation uh, and adaptation, actually. Mm. So, so their problems are different, and I think taking sides absolutely silences the Pacific and sets us back as well, our independence, our mm. principled voice. You would have recently um, seen the released MFAT document about the strategy review, and it talked about the three shifts. And one of those shifts was a shift from rules to power where we're going to rely on collective security arrangements a lot more than we did in the past. Now, um, our nuclear-free policy uh, from 87, that's been entrenched into New Zealand society and we'll not move away from that. However, um, I think there will be a, a review in terms of Pillar 2 and how we can align ourselves with our conventional partners, particularly when it comes to artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and, um, and those new technologies. And how so we that's a yes? We join so aligning with Pillar 2 is something that, um, that, that is on the table. I 
favour of us joining Pillar 2. But I also think, um, you know, going back to, to Jerry's point about the roads, um, oh. I actually think, because I, I do <laughs> want to touch on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I actually think we have to have bigger conversations about our own security and national security um, and our own defence even within our own country. And one thing that has become increasingly concerning in the Pacific is the number of uh, island nations indebted to mm -hmm. the Chinese Communist Party. Really or China. expensive debt model yeah. too. Um, and so I think it's important for us for our strategic infrastructure not to have Brooke, Chinese a investment. Quick, a, a quick in follow up, you, you Act have made it clear you don't want Chinese money to build roads, and we're not going to talk about roads. PNG, well, well, hang on, PNG. A, good, a good question would be, okay. uh, oh, there has been purchases in the last few years. The procurement has been yeah. wrong. Right no, well, we've, yeah. we, we've certainly supported that <laughs> and wanted to do of more. You have. Tell me, you are wrong. What, what bit of it, name the kit that was wrong. Was it the transport aircraft that can do uh, uh, disaster relief? Was it Aotearoa, Did which can do disaster the relief? The planes that we buy are so big because they have to be able to carry tanks no, that not. they no. can't no, they fly can't. close no. enough to the ocean So, surface. I have a question. Can I, can I, be, can I be very clear with the audience? I New Zealand does not have a plane that can carry a tank. So, we've got... So you've got <laughs> Ron Mark ordered it. No, he doesn't have... Not one. It he wasn't you. It we was don't Ron. even have a plane that can carry a Prime Minister. Um, I think um, so. <laughs> I think um, when, you, when you look at aid into the Pacific and, and my experience with the Solomon Islands, so we recently did a visit over there, and the one thing that um, stuck with myself and, and, and Jerry was you, you get off the um, off the plane, you go down the Honiara Highway uh, to the embassy there, and the aid programs that China is, is providing, um, the stadium, they've got flags up all over the show. Um, New Zealand, Australia, Japan don't tend to advertise what they're doing as much, and I think that's something that we need to do a lot more of. The other one um, I'd like to touch on as well is um, in Tonga and in Honiara as well, you've got the US embassies that have just stood up, and they're la large superpower, but they're essentially a start-up in those areas. And so I think working with, um, with the US, with our unique way of doing things and connecting with the community, is, uh, is going to be critical going forward. And that was one of the things that I passed on to Daniel Crit Crittenbrink when he came to New Zealand. And the first thing he did say was, you know, how do we engage like you guys do? And so that, that was really reassuring to, to hear. Are donors like us still driving the agenda when it comes to aid in the Pacific, development in the Pacific? Uh, look, you and I had some significant discussions about how we might change the aid <coughs> approach when... Um, I had a role as, a, as foreign minister, and um, my views on that haven't changed uh, at all. So the, the aid budget in New Zealand, I'm not sure what it represents. I'll take your word for it that it's 0.7, but uh, this coming year, it's 1.3, just under $1.3 billion. And on top of that, you've got a $6.6 .6 billion uh, four-year fund for climate mitigation as well. So there's a terrific amount of money there to be able to do some things. Um, I think there is, there is a, a, quite a difference, as you pointed out. Um, and one of the things that sort of irritates me slightly is, in fact, a great deal, is that <laughs> inside that aid budget, that uh, 1.3 billion, around about 150 million is spent on MFAT's own management yeah. of that budget. And I find that just extraordinary. Mm. So uh, working more and... Uh, 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 in a better arrangement with uh, NGOs and in-country mm -hmm. organisations, mm -hmm. I think is a focus that we do need to have. And it's the way that we've been able to grow wealth here in New Zealand and in other countries. And I think we have to stop looking at it, looking at it as giving aid to Pacific Islands and thinking about how we can grow our partnerships so that we can help them help themselves over time so that they can stand on their own two feet without the need for monetary help from New Zealand, but we can actually have a very flourishing trade agreement. What, what yeah. you're saying is you don't want to do a Nancy Pelosi. Uh, well, I, you know, I think... Um, uh, Did that really have repercussions, though? Yeah, I, I don't want to comment on US uh, uh, oh, politics. On. <laughs> well, well what, would you, what would you say? I mean, I'm sorry. That, that, I, no, I can't comment. I, 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 do, I do have to give... Um, Jerry points for actually answering the question because when when his other National Party colleagues were asked, they just said it's an election year. Mm. So, 
Well Dan. done for actually being honest. <laughs> Dan, yeah, thank why thank you, Brooke. Then? I'll take that gold medal from you. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> There's more that we share in common in terms of our values than divides us. You know, we are not a polarised country. We feel like it, we but I listen to everybody here, and you can see <laughs> there is more that we, the more that we agree on, and our values are shared values. So I'd be pretty happy with any of you guys in government, to be honest. So um, please give a round of applause to the panel, and uh, good luck for the election. Thank you. Thank you.